Right, question four. Uh, trigonometry here. So the first one's a proof. And for this proof, you're going to be using the formula here on page 13 of your formula books. What I'd say is start with the more complicated looking side. So the more complicated looking side there is your right hand side. So on page 13, it says tan A is equal to sine A over cos A. So I'm going to write sine A over cos A. I'm dealing with the right hand side here. Minus sine B over cos B all over 1 plus tan A is sine A over cos A times sine B over cos B. Now you split it up, work with your top line and then work with your bottom. So your top line there. Uh, we're not going to get rid of the fraction because there's no equals. We're going to cross multiply. So sine A cos B minus cos A sine B or they could be the other way about. All over my common denominator there, cos A, cos B. Now do your bottom line. Bottom line, same process. Tidy her up. Get rid of the fraction. Then these things here just simply come together. So it's going to be cos A, cos B. Something you would have practiced a lot of before. Plus sine A, sine B. Over my denominator, cos A, cos B. What we're going to do is slot them back in, but in this instance, that fraction, what does a fraction mean? It's simply divide. You know, so simply a divide sign with a number in the top and a number in the bottom. So it's going to be that top line divided by the bottom line. Now to see you have a better time, and you'll remember this maybe yourself, what you do when you're dividing fractions, turn the second one upside down and multiply. So my first bit of the fraction is the top one. Divide it by, now remember in dividing, you turn the second one upside down and you multiply. So it's going to be your cos A, cos B over and when I do this, I have the same term above and below the line so I can get rid of my causes over there. And when I tidy that up, I have sine A cos B minus cos A sine b all over cos a cos b plus sine a sine b. Now tidy that up for yourself. Your top line, if you go to page 14 of your formula book, sine a cos b plus, or it's minus, cos a sine b is the same as sine a minus b. And my bottom line, cos a cos b plus sine a sine b is the same as cos a minus b. And when I have my sine over my cos, that's the same as tan a minus b. So we're done. Next one, write tan 15 in the form of this. Now when we're writing the tan 15, we're going to be using the formulas and the tables there on page 13. And we're also using this thing that we just used in the previous, tan a minus b. So what two angles make up 15 from that table there on page 13? 60 minus 45, or 45 minus 30. I'm just going to go 60 minus 45, which is the first one in my head. And I'm using this formula that I've worked out up the top, which is tan A minus tan B. Tan A minus tan B. Over 1 plus tan A tan B. And my A there, my A is simply my 60. And my B is my 45. So I fill that in now. And I have tan 60 minus tan 45. 1 plus tan 60, tan 45. And if I look there on page 13, I get my values. Or you can use your calculator. Tan 60 there is 3. Minus tan 45 is 1. Over 1 plus tan 60 is root 3. Tan 45 is 1. Now look at the form. Usually I'll tell you you'd multiply by 1 minus root 3, throw it in your calculator, let it tidy it up. But it wants it in that form with a root 3, with a square root in the bottom, with a third in the bottom. So we actually have it done. If technically if we want it in that form, root 3 minus 1, and then my root 3 at the start, plus 1. So A, which is a natural number, must be 3, which it is. Um, 
Next one. Triangle ABC is shown in the diagram. AC is equal to BC. So these two sides are the same, meaning that these two angles are the same. So to work out angle A and angle B, so angle A is equal to angle B, that's 180 minus 45 over 2. And I get 67.5 degrees. Uh, AB, root of a number, find the length of AC. Now when I have this, I'm working for AC, I'm going to call it X. I have a side and an angle opposite, and another side and an angle opposite. And when I have that there criteria, when I meet that criteria, I know I'm going to be using the sine rule. So the sine rule, A over sine A, is equal to B over sine B, or you could have those other way about. So my side there is X over sine 67.5 is equal to B, which is, oh, that monstrosity, 10 root 2 minus root 2 over sine B, which is sine 45. Cross multiply for yourself. So it's X sine 45 is equal to 10 root 2 minus root 2 times sine 67.5. Don't be put off, that's just a number. Write it out as a heap of decimals if you wish. And therefore, to work out x on its own, just simply remember if we have 2x equal to 8, how do you work out x? It's 8 over 2, same thing here. That sign 45 is just a number. So 10. Over sign 45. Throw that all into your calculator for yourself. We're in degrees. We're good to go. And just type it as we see it. Right, that's square root anyway. And we get 10. So it works out nice enough. X equal to 10. So my AC is equal to 10. What did they ask? Find the length of AC. AC, which is equal to BC, which is equal to 10.